Welcome to the second playlist of the channel, which will be about quantifying uncertainty in predictions of an MN model using a class of methods called conformal predictors. But what is uncertainty quantification and why do we need it? Here is how it usually goes when you build a model to predict something in a supervised setting. You start with a data set consisting of X, Y pairs, and from there, you build a model. Now, when you encounter a new data point with X of, let's say, 0.5, and an unknown true target value, the model makes a prediction. But relying solely on point predictions does not give us any sense of how close or far that predicted point may be from the true unknown value. As far as the point prediction is concerned, the true point can be anywhere. This becomes problematic, especially for high risk tasks, as we cannot gauge how much the prediction could be off the mark. It's a challenge to put trust in a prediction when we lack a sense of its potential errors. If we go beyond point predictions, and provide additional quantitative statements about the likelihood of those predictions being incorrect, individuals can then decide how much they want to rely on these predictions based on their own risk tolerance. And that is where uncertainty quantification comes into play. It empowers us to attach a measure of uncertainty to our predictions, allowing for informed decision-making tailored to our own comfort level with risk. Let's break it down. Imagine the same point prediction that we had earlier, but this time, instead of providing just a specific value as our prediction, we use the historical data to predict an interval or a range of values. We then assign a probability to this interval, indicating the likelihood of the true value falling within it. For instance, we might confidently state that there is at least a 90% probability that the true label lies within our predicted interval. This is often called 90% prediction interval. In simple terms, this means that we do not only acknowledge the possibility of being wrong in our predictions, but also we are quantifying that possibility by stating that the probability of our prediction being incorrect is less than 10%. Ensuring that the probabilistic statement attached to a prediction interval holds true is of a paramount importance. For instance, if we claim that a prediction interval has 90% coverage, it means that the probability of it containing the true value or the label must be at least 90%. This is the most important property that a prediction interval must satisfy, because not satisfying it defeats the main purpose of uncertainty quantification. So in the next episode, we will discuss in detail how one can verify a claim about its satisfaction. While validity is a crucial property of predicted intervals, there is another aspect that we need to consider. The robustness of validity when constructed using a finite dataset. Some methods may claim validity in an asymptotic sense, where it holds true when constructed with an effectively infinite number of data points. But because in practice, the size of our datasets are limited, we would like our predicted intervals to have coverage validity even when constructed using limited number of data points. In other words, to have a finite sample coverage validity. Finite sample validity alone, however, is not sufficient. While a valid interval tells the truth, there is more to consider. In fact, it's possible to simply inflate the interval to ensure a high probability of it containing the true value. This is where the second crucial property comes into play, efficiency. Efficiency is directly linked to 
the tightness of the interval. The tighter the interval, the more efficient it becomes. Remember, when it comes to prediction intervals, it's not just about their coverage validity, but also their efficiency or tightness. For robust interval prediction, we need two additional properties, being model agnostic and distribution free. A good interval predictor should not be bound by a specific point predictor or its details or even a specific data distribution. In other words, it should not care what model was used to make the point predictions or what distribution the data follows. Instead, it should seamlessly be added to any point predictor, treating it as a black box without needing to delve into its internal workings. At this point, we know what we want from a good uncertainty quantification method. It needs to have finite sample validity, be efficient, model agnostic, and distribution free. In this playlist, we will discuss one such method called conformal predictors. The fact that they can satisfy all our requirements as long as some mild assumptions about the underlying data are satisfied is something that sets them apart from so many other uncertainty quantification methods. In the next episode specifically, we will go over how to actually predict intervals using conformal predictors. Until then, I hope you have enjoyed watching the video. See you next time.